the early bird for November 13, 2023. Inside DC. Number one, Jordan, Biden impeachment decision coming next year. House Judiciary Committee Chair Jim Jordan from Ohio said the Judiciary Committee will finish interviews and depositions by the end of the year and make a decision on impeaching President Joe Biden in early 2024. Why it matters. House Republicans may be backing off on getting a formal impeachment started before 2024 because Biden's polling is tanking and calls for Democrats from Democrats for Biden to step back from re-election are increasing. Number two, Manchin to retire and, quote, mobilize the middle. Senator Joe Manchin, Democrat, West Virginia, said he will not seek re-election next year and will travel the country to start a movement to mobilize the middle. Why it matters. Manchin was very unlikely to beat Republican West Virginia Governor Jim Justice, who's running for his Senate seat and leading him in, 13, in the polls by 13%. Democrats are concerned about a Manchin third-party run as Biden campaign is attempting to court the same middle voters that Manchin says he will now mobilize. Manchin's retirement will also hand Republicans another seat when Democrats are already facing a tough Senate map in 2024. Republicans could take control of the Senate in 24 while Democrats flip the House of Representatives. And finally, in the Inside D.C. section, number three, Johnson pushes continuing resolution before Friday shutdown deadline. House Speaker Mike Johnson, Republican Louisiana, laddered continuing resolution. That's a, that's a CR. Laddered continuing resolution will be taken up, uh, taken up by the House Rules Committee today and will not include spending cuts. Why it matters. Johnson's CR seems to have alleviated the concerns of Democratic leadership in both the House and the Senate, with one Senate Democrat leadership aide calling it even a good thing. Senate Democrats are still waiting to see if Johnson can get his CR past the House Freedom Caucus, and the White House has threatened to veto it if the bill doesn't include $106 billion requested for Ukraine and Israel funding. Shifting gears to the domestic front. Number four, 2024 minimum wage hikes to stress consumers and small businesses. California, Delaware, Hawaii, Maryland, and Nebraska will raise minimum wages by 13% or more in 2024, which will challenge these states, small businesses, and consumers dealing with inflation already. Why it matters. These pay hikes will benefit the most productive minimum wage workers, but other workers and small businesses will suffer. Many small companies will fire staff, while large companies will adopt more automation to avoid paying these wages. Meanwhile, consumers will face immediate price raises, especially hurting the 60% of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. Number five. Feds step up probe into New York City Mayor Eric Adams' 2021 campaign. The FBI seized New York City Mayor Eric Adams' electronic devices last week as part of a larger probe into contributions to his campaign in 2021. They're now investigating if Adams used political influence to help the Turkish government move into a new consulate building in 2021. Why does this matter? The sudden escalation of the FBI investigation appears to be retaliation for Adams' public criticism of the Biden administration over the immigration crisis and his public trips to Mexico and Ecuador to discourage immigrants from coming to the United States. Number six, power official. No one has authority to keep the lights on. During a Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or FERC, conference, Mid-Continent Independent Systems Operators, or MISO, Compliance Officer Jennifer Curran said that no state commissions have, quote, the authority to prevent the shutdown of fossil fuel plants, even if it increased grid instability. Why does this matter? Federal officials at the FERC, F-E-R-C, and state utilities have been sounding the alarm on the Environmental Protection Agency's Clean Power Plan 2.0 for the last year. Now, Curran has revealed that there is no one with the authority to prevent the closure of fossil fuel plants that don't meet the Clean Power 2.0 standards, despite likelihood of crippling the U.S. power grid. And finally, we switch to geostrategic issues. Number seven, Guterres. A second front would completely destroy Lebanon. UN Secretary Antonio Guterres warned that Iranian officials said they have no control over Hezbollah creating a second front in the war against Israel. Why does it matter? Gutierrez did not seem confident that the region would escape an Israeli Hezbollah war in Lebanon and said that he didn't know whether Iran was responsive to his pleas not to escalate the current conflict. One dangerous scenario remains that the U.S. and its three 
carrier strike groups in the region could get pulled into a conflict with Iran, severely disrupting oil markets and international trade. Number eight, China and Pakistan practice guarding sea lanes. China and Pakistan kicked off their largest ever iteration of the Sea Guardian exercise on Saturday, which aims to practice guarding critical sea lanes. Why it matters. Since 2020, these exercises have grown in scale and complexity and have always focused on, quote, guarding sea lanes. This particular verbiage suggests a much higher threat level than mere anti-piracy, an exercise for which China is undertaking with five other countries. China will say, will not say it outright, but this joint exercise with Pakistan is likely planning for Western navies, which could shut down these sea lanes during a war. And finally, number nine, China's escalating harassment of the Philippines. Over the weekend, Chinese Coast Guard and maritime militia vessels harassed another Philippine Navy resupply mission to the second Thomas Shoal. Chinese deterrence methods included water cannons and cutting off the resupply vessel at high speed. Resupply missions are monthly, according to the Philippine Navy. Why it matters. China's deterrence methods continue to escalate with each resupply mission. While they probably don't intend for these encounters to be lethal, reckless maneuvering at high speeds could easily turn lethal. With the maritime militia involved, further escalation is a likely course of action. That concludes the early bird briefing, the abbreviated version for 13 November, Monday. We encourage you to like and subscribe to the channel, but we also encourage you to subscribe to the full version of the early bird at our website, AmericanKX.com, and then choose the shop link, and that will take you to a link for Intel. Have a great morning.